can you believe, right, they've actually closed the M1 for me. This is like, I feel terrible. I don't know what's wrong with this car, um, but I can't start it. It's uh, it's just cut out, right? I, am, I don't know why I'm putting this on Instagram because I'm, I'm fascinated. These guys Right, so there it is then, the Jag. Uh, the reason why you're here is because you want to know why I broke down the other day in this car. Now, um, what I'll do is I'll uh, get my camera set up. Is that open? Yep, yeah, automatically opens. Um, I'll get my camera set up. We'll go for a drive. I'm going to explain exactly why this bloody thing broke down, yeah? Let's go. Right, so uh, the drag, the drag. Press the start button, and it starts now. That's what that's what it's meant to do, isn't it? When you press the start button, a car should just start, yeah. Um, so you are here because you want to know why the drag broke down. Now, what I'll do is um, let me just take my jacket off quick. It's bloody warm in it. Nice jacket in it, by the way. Uh, got a plug Navco 54, Navco54.com. Look at it on the back as well. Check that out. Um, but it's definitely a bit warm today to be wearing it, so let's get that off. Throw that in the back. All right. That's probably going to be a bit distracting there, so I'll put it on that side, yeah? Uh, so, so. <laughs> let's turn that camera on. That camera's on. Turn the radio down. Is that how you turn the radio down? Yeah, turn that down. And get moving okay so uh, where should we start where should we start the drag it's done 220,000 miles yeah it's uh, it's a seriously high mileage car so you, you expect that a car of this mileage I don't know, do you expect it's going to go wrong? You do expect you're going to have some kind of reliability issues, yeah? So, let's talk through my day, okay? So, um, the day went like this. I woke up, went and picked up the drag, yeah? First time I ever saw it, and we just bought it. So, for those that are new to my channel, I'm a car trader, buy and sell cars, and this was a car that we just bought, okay? Um, it was a, a part exchange car, so it was bought from a main dealer as a part exchange, and... I'll go this way, I think. And, um, you know, you, you never know what you're buying sometimes. With any used car, don't matter where you buy it from, any used car has its issues, doesn't it, yeah? And so, yeah, I got in the drag and I was like, do you know what, For considering it's done 220,000 miles, it's a bloody nice car. So, that day I had a, a dentist appointment in Harpenden. Now, I don't know, about 20 years ago, I had an accident on my BMX. No! Yeah, it was sore, and um, yeah, I'm just dentist. I go dentist quite a lot. But anyway, so I was on my way from Luton to the dentist in Harpenden in the drag, yeah? And as I was driving there in this 220,000 mile drag on the motorway, I thought, this car is so bloody good. And I was gutted the whole way there. I was gutted that I didn't bring my cameras with me because I generally just carry my cameras everywhere I go and that one time that I was driving this high mileage drag that was surprisingly good I thought this would make an excellent video just telling everyone how great high mileage cars are uh, so got to the dentist I had my appointment got there just in time you know it's like you're always in a rush every time you go to the dentist without fail it's a last minute rush and I got there on time had my appointment come outside to the drag you know he's sitting there nicely I thought, this car's brilliant so um jumped in it and begun my journey home and again the whole way home i was thinking right i'm going home i'm getting my cameras and i'm doing a video on this car because i want to show everyone about i want to install confidence in people's minds that high mileage cars are absolutely fine the wear on this car is unbelievably good it's not worn out and it drives so bloody well 
So there I was on the motorway, on the M1, heading towards sort of Luton, um, from Harpenden, in the drag, having all these positive thoughts about the car, yeah? What a bloody good car this is. Such a good car. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll basically, you'll know what happened next, and I'm gonna explain anyway. Um, I'm just about to get off at Junction 11A, which is a new junction, which is in fact is kind of near where I am now. I'm just heading over the bridge, yeah? Just about to get off, so I put my indicator on to pull over and get, get, get on the slip road, get off here. And then, engine warning light came on it said something like there's a red light it said engine malfun malfunction and i was like what <coughs> what engine malfunction and then the power went it had no power oh my god what's going on here and i thought i'll get off i'll make it just in time just get up the junction and um i didn't i'm gonna have to pull over so i pulled over pulled off the motorway over the slip road, over the white line and onto the grass verge, yeah? In a safe place. I thought, this is good, I've stopped in a safe place. The car just stopped, it had cut out. And I thought, what the hell? This is such a decent car. What is going on? So, um, I rang my brother Leon, I was like, do you know what, I've just broke down. Cause I was on my way to go and pick him up and he's thinking, where, where, where the hell is he? Why is he not here yet? And I just broke down, don't know what's wrong with it. And um, I, honestly, I couldn't work it out. So. Traffic enforcement, you know, like you see them traffic guys on the motorway, they then turn up, which I was really pleased to see them. You know, I, I needed help. I'd rang my recovery guy, he was about half an hour or so away, and then um, they turn up. So, let me show you my Insta story so you can so you just put you in a picture of what's going on. Yeah, how random is this? Right, I've just broke down in this drag that I just was talking about, and no cars on the motorway, they must have shut the motorway somewhere down there. Um, but what a place to break down. Unless if they're all coming to save me, that could be what's happening here. But um, I, I doubt that very much. But yeah, um, random. I just took a photo and I thought, you know what, there's no cars on the motorway. Um, but a uh, lesson learned today is uh, I don't really know. So there I was on the side of the road thinking, oh my God, I'm, I can't believe this has happened. Next thing you know, a little bit of a distance down the road, I noticed that um, they'd shut the motorway, yeah? The M1 going northbound, they'd shut it, and I thought, God, there must be an accident up there. This was my story next. If you're heading from sort of Luton towards Mill Kings in that direction, right now I'd say you probably can't, because uh, the motorway is definitely closed. All right, that's the update on my life. <laughs> so in my head, I'm thinking, God, well, this is quite a good thing because it gives me a good opportunity to recover my car and it might help me, like give me a bit of breathing space with recovering the car. The reason why they shut the motorway is because I broke down. Can you believe, right? They've actually closed the M1 for me. This is like, I feel terrible. And I was like, you could not. Surely you cannot be shut in the bloody motorway because I broke down. It's great, like for safety and stuff, but you're talking about hundreds of people now can't get on their way on their journey because I've broke down. I was so annoyed with this car. I thought this car's done like all these miles. It's, it's a high mileage car, and it's no wonder it's bloody broke down. Why have I bought this car? So um, I was stressed. I was stressed, but I generally, as a rule, I kind of am quite a positive person. I try to sort of keep a, a happy mood you know so um the guys the the traffic guys will stand there like right what we're gonna do is we're gonna tow your car yeah i was like okay great let's tow it so um we got in the car and we've got the tow road we've done the tow eye thing and um yeah we tried towing it and because jaguars have this sort of electric let's turn up here let's go in this direction i think they've got this like electric um gear stick yeah most cars have got a proper gear stick or if it's an auto you can physically move it up and down jaguars however have got this thing that pops up and down which is lovely like visually it looks lovely but when you break down and your car engine is off and your car's in park the gear stick sits flush with the sort of center console there meaning you can't physically twist it 
to put it in neutral so that the enforcement people can tow you. Oh, what? You're joking. Ah. Uh. So they tried towing me and they've pulled it out about, I don't know, a couple of meters maybe, maybe a bit more, 10, 10 meters, yeah? And obviously the wheels are stuck on and breaking and they're just dragging it up the road with just leaving skid marks behind it. And I was like, mate, you've got to stop, you've got to stop because you, it ain't happening. At this point, the M1 is still closed, yeah? You can imagine all these raging drivers are like, what's going on? I don't know what's wrong with this car, um, but I can't start it. It's uh, it's just cut out, right? I, am, I don't know why I'm putting this on Instagram because I'm, I'm fascinated. These guys have just come and saved me, uh, but they've just tried towing it and they can't bloody tow it because can't get it out of park. So when they try towing it, it's got skid marks on the ground. So um, the car's just stuck here. So if you are heading from Luton towards Milton Keynes and you're in traffic, I'm sorry, it's because of me. They then said, Right, what we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to leave the road closed, we're gonna have to call a recovery service to come pick this car up, they need to lift the car. I was like, oh my god, this is this is like this is dramatic. They they've got the road closed, yeah. They need to un unclose this road, they need to let everyone open the road, that's a better use of word. Open the road, please. I was like, come on, you just you gotta let everyone through. And um they then decided after about I don't know, at least half an hour, half an hour to an hour, that they're gonna open the road, yeah? And they did on the basis that they coned off one lane. So they coned off one lane, meaning that nobody could come anywhere near us in the situation we were in, or the Jag, yeah? Right, so uh, the motorway is now moving, but uh, the Jaguar, it ain't moving. So there we were, with a coned off lane, they then opened the motorway, and as they opened the motorway, people were bibbing and swearing at me. You can imagine, like, the frustration from people. It was, um, it was quite bad. I can't really do much at all. I'm just stuck here getting cold and getting bibbed at. Those cars just keep bibbing at me. <laughs> Understandably so, you know. This guy's got, his, this idiot's got a car that's broke down. Like, what is he doing? Sorry if I affect any of anyone's journey today, but um, it ain't my fault. It's the drag's fault. So they called their recovery guy. That was the next stage of the story. And the recovery company said, we're gonna be about half an hour. I was like, okay. And then I had a guy that I could ring and he said also he's gonna be about half an hour. Their guy was gonna be 150 pounds. My guy was 75 pounds, okay? And if I got their guy to recover the car, it would have gone to like a sort of a police compound and where I'd have to pay a release fee to get the car back. And I was like, and they just said, listen, whoever turns up first can recover the car. And that's the deal. We need to get the car moved as soon as possible. So I said, okay, fair enough. So um, about half an hour later, their recovery guy turns up, yeah? Their recovery guy, the 150 pound guy turns up to recover my broken down Jaguar. And um, he's about to load it on the car. I was like, mate, listen, can you just wait just five minutes until my guy turns up because you're going to recover it it's going to go to your yard then i've got to get it recovered from your yard to my mechanic in luton it's just gonna be a palaver can you not just let wait for him and let me recover it with my guy and he and the enforcement people said it's 43 minutes past now i'm going to give your guy two minutes to turn up and if he turns up we'll let him recover it and like a bloody god in knight in shining armor this recovery truck about half a mile down the road, I could just see him in the distance with his amber lights on top. My recovery guy turned up at 45 minutes past within that two minute period. So he pulled up, the, the guy the, that, that was already there, they said, yeah, you can go now. And my guy turned up to recover the car, okay? At that point, we, we got the car in the truck and then my, I put this on my Insta story. Job done, I've just been saved by some recovery guys. Um, I think his name's Audley actually, a guy from Luton, proper nice guy. I've actually dealt with him before um, and he's come and saved the day and he's, if you look in the mirror there, he's just loading it up on the thing. I, I still don't know what's wrong with the car. It's a strange one, so just driving along, nothing wrong with it and then suddenly engine malfunction, light comes on the dash, it cuts out and um, yeah, it's just no power. So um, it wouldn't restart, but you know what? 
this is the car trade guys you buy things that you don't really know what you're buying sometimes and um, this sort of stuff happens it's just a car trade right and the car then went to Camford Car Care in Luton which is where I've just come from yeah so you, you imagine it my DMs on Instagram like my Insta story got about 5,000 views which is for, for me is quite abnormal yeah and my DMs were just going off like Calvin it must be this it must be that engines gone cam belt snap gearbox issue um so many people guessed very good logical things yeah and um i dropped it off to the uh the garage and i awaited the phone call from tony the guy that owns camford car care in luton yeah and a couple of days later today tony rang me and said um cal your dad's ready and I was like, okay, what's wrong with it? What, why did it break down? And the reason why the car broke down is because I ran out of fuel. I ran out of fuel. Fuel, cow, fuel. Can you, <laughs> can you? <laughs> This is like the most embarrassing thing ever. And I thought, I've got to do a video. <laughs> I've got to do a video explaining what's happened. Um, so yeah, I ran out of bloody fuel, but but hold on, before everyone's like, you bloody idiot, you you closed the road, you caused all this drama. You caught, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I was so embarrassed on the day that I couldn't believe they'd shut down the road. Um, but in all fairness to me, I looked at the fuel gauge on the day and it had eight miles, look, look at this photo. That photo shows that that photo was taken at the time of me being on the side of the road. And it shows that I had eight miles left in the tank, yeah? And when I left on my journey from Luton to Harpenden that day, my tank, my thing showed that I had 50 miles left in the tank. So in theory, going to Harpenden and coming back to Luton, I just had plenty of fuel, yeah? And even the, the dial, like the little um, like the little bar reader thing, showed that there was a tiny bit of fuel in there. And I was about three miles away with my eight mile limit to the nearest fuel station. And I am not one of these people that runs on zero miles. Like I've, I've seen cars run on zero miles. You can actually do that. If your car says zero miles on it, especially diesels, they seem to run for a bit longer. Um, it seems to go on forever. And so, with 10 miles to go, my range has finally reached naught. But still, the magic jag soldiers on. And I picked my speed up to 70. The race is on. So when I saw this engine malfunction light and eight miles still in my tank, it didn't even cross, it did cross my mind. I thought, it could be because it's low on fuel, but I was so embarrassed on the day to admit it to the traffic people, that I kept my mouth shut. I just thought, I can't tell them that I think it could just need a drop of fuel because if I do that, all this drama, all these people shouting at me out their, their windows and swearing and bibbing and all of this thing because I'd run out of fuel. There was no way at that point in time was I gonna admit it and I'd already felt terrible as it was. And when Tony rung me today to say, Calv, uh, your car, yeah, you know why you, you know why you run out? Because you ran out of fuel. I was like, N inside, I was like, no way. I just wanted to hide, and I thought, do you know what? Because it was such a big thing on my Instagram on that day, I thought, I'm gonna tell everyone. And I, I am ashamed, because maybe I should be a bit more cautious, yeah? And I will never let my car run that low on fuel ever again, trust me. But on the flip side, I do know full well that it should have continued going with the eight miles that it supposedly had left in the tank. So um, if the traffic enforcement people do ever watch this video, um, thank you very much for your help, because they are, do you know what, let's give them a bit of credit, because they were so bloody good, very professional and uh, very caring and supportive, it was great, they, they, were, they were really good. Um, but their duty that day was not to fix my car, it was just to get it off the road. So that's their, that's their role on, on the motorways of, of England, okay? So, um, so they were really good. And that day I had people ringing me, like my friend DMO rang me. He was like, Hi, Calvin, you nutter. I've been sitting in traffic for two hours and we had to go all the way around the M1 because of you, mate. 
all of that drama because my car had no fuel in it. So, um, like I said, I thought I'd make a video explaining everything. Um, I expect I'm going to get disliked. I expect I'm going to receive a little bit of hate. Um, but in all fairness to me, I suppose, although it is extremely funny uh, through people with a funny personality or a funny sense of humour's point of view, um, a lot of funny people will find it funny. But a lot of serious people will be like, you bloody idiot. You should not run your car with that small amount of fuel in it. I do do it sometimes, uh, but definitely not as often as a lot of people that I know. So, um, yeah, the moral of the story, I think, is um, keep your car above eight miles if you own a drag. And um, if you're going to break down, try not to break down on the motorway. <laughs> So there you go, that's the story, all right? So uh, thanks for watching, uh, 225, that's another actual moral of this story. A 220,000 mile drag is not actually a bad car. This car is a bloody good car. It starts, drives, pulls really well. Um, interior is really clean. It's worn brilliantly. There's no, there's no um, extra wear in here whatsoever. So if you own a drag, you've got yourself a bloody good car. Um, Thanks for watching. If you like the video, which I know a lot of people will, and I also know that a lot of people dislike it, feel free to dislike, yeah? Dislikes are engagement for me regardless. So like or dislike it, depending on how you feel about the video. Hit subscribe if you're new to my channel. And like I say, these, these episodes are called Diary of a Car Trader. This car will be going up for sale with fuel in it. Uh, so just look out for future videos of me as a car trader uh, you probably want to subscribe if you want to do that and hit the bell icon as well and um, that is it I think that is everything isn't it give me a follow on Instagram as well at Calvin's Car Diary see you later. in the next episode of Diary of a Car Trader I buy a Subaru Impreza WRX S